you. Okay. So let's, should we get started or what? <laughs> yes, finally. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Let's do it. We have success and so let's roll with it. Let's keep it going. Let's um, do it. Okay. So this is Conversations with Carvel. So how do you pronounce your name? Is it Awet Tiam? Tiame? Yeah, that's perfect. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I usually just let people, you know, say it the way it rolls off their tongue. I'm not really yeah, picky. I'm I watched a couple of clips and like you were getting introduced and they were saying your names different ways and I was like, what is it? <laughs> so, as long as, yeah, I only have a pet peeve when, when it's really bad, when it's like a why, like when they sound like they're yeah. taking a dump, you know, when they're saying my name. It's just like, yeah. no, but if you, if you sound happy while you're saying it and it's different, like, oh, yeah. what? Like, yeah, that's cool. But my culture is, you know, it's like the way you say it is out, but who says mm. it like that except for my mother? Yeah, 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 that's so. that's awesome though. So you're Eritrean, and I I didn't know about Eritrea until I was an adult. And one of my best friends when I first moved to LA was Eritrean, so I know yeah. very little. But how does culture like influence your entire life? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I guess I'm just a typical immigrant who came to the states really young, and mm -hmm. um, I got I acclimated really quickly. Um, but you know, but I still remain mm -hmm. um, with the culture because my mom I was raised by my mom and she kept right. me involved you know my entire life basically um, and yeah. then I until it, I, we're we're literally exactly like my big fat Greek wedding you know what I mean really? and then even, we even had uh, yeah because it, it's actually because mm -hmm. we're orthodox Christians too like and you know and uh, everyone yeah. yeah so Eritreans are very uh, you know uh, involved in everyone's lives, just like the Greeks were in that movie. It, it was just really interesting. Um, huh. So we even had Sunday school, you know, to learn to Grenya. It was the same thing. How she went, she had to yeah. go to <laughs> Greek school on Sunday. I hated it. I was just like, okay, yeah. I'm done. I'm, I'm, it was just, it just felt so forced and felt so. I just wanted to be free. So that's really yeah. my thing. My thing is, I just want to be free from. It's just like I'm grounded. I know who I am. But it's like, mm. all right, that's it. I'm I'm done. Like I, you've taught me as much as you could about it, you know, since age sixteen. And after that, I just broke free. I didn't want any any part of that shit. <laughs> like, yeah. And what that s is <laughs> is, you know, just the typical like they just care about marriage and babies, mm. and that's it. And you can't have yeah. Anything else going on, or be passionate about anything else, and that's just who I was. I wanted yeah. to be free to explore first, you know, yeah. and then, and then the marriage thing will come much later when I'm like sixty, you know. <laughs> You're finally ready, yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you just want a companion to die with, like. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Other than I love that, that, like, why, why should I, you know, why should I like limit myself to just one man, <laughs> um, and. <laughs> Are you kidding me? For how for how long do I have to do right. with this one person? Um, yeah. No, like you know. So yeah, and, and I'm and, yeah. I'm and I'm okay with that. Like I'm I'm really okay. I don't need, I don't want I don't want babies. I don't know if it's because I was kind of I was a, a kind of I don't know what the word is, but I guess as a child growing up, like you know, um, the teenagers have to take care of all the kids. Whenever we oh. go to functions, we whenever we have to yeah. do whatever, they dump us you know, they dumped them on us. So I almost felt yeah. like I've already had the kid experience, yeah. you know, yeah. so, and we all look alike. So I'm not curious <laughs> about some person who looks like me, you know what I'm saying? It was like, right. it was like but, yeah. you know, it, it's going to look like, it was like, I have like 18 cousins who have this face, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, 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 I'm not, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, we're not, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm not even curious about that. Like, it's just like, whatever. Nice. I'm good. Yeah. And, and that's the beauty. Like you're saying, like, you're all about freedom. And I feel like, yeah, I just took one look at your Instagram bio. And I was like, this is like a Jill of all trades. Like you seem <laughs> to just like, have been like, have your hand in every kind of cookie jar and like, are able to like, which I think is what you need nowadays, right? To even like yeah. survive, like, you have to have multiple hustles. Yeah. Um, so like, what, what is your main focus? How do you keep that balance in your life? Yeah, that's really funny. Like at first, that used to be a bad thing about me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I have like, you know, a five page resume, you know, what I'm, saying? Yeah. I'm just about ha done everything. So they're like, who is this person every time I come in to, 
you know, to, cause you know, cause the arts, like you just don't, you, uh, the, the, the jobs are fickle and, and LA is, you know, and then you have a uh, rent or whatever. And, um, so you have mm -hmm. to keep, you, I've always had a day job, you know what I mean? Like, and, and I've always, yeah. and, but you know, but early on, like I, I went about my career. Um, no, you know what? I'm not even going to be hard on myself because I didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing. Like I literally went out there and just said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. But I had yeah. no, no plan. Um, I just, you know, I did the right thing and got a degree, you know, from Emerson. Love that. Um, whoop, whoop. And <laughs> whoop, whoop, right? Yeah, yeah. I wish I did all four years at Emerson, but I transferred in from GW and I thought I was pre-med, yep. blah, blah, blah. I had that whole story. But like Emerson wow. was just like a dream come true to me. And I wish I had all four years because I would have done, you know, I would have done the Netherlands and I would have done the LA um, program too, yeah, but yeah. I only had time for one. Yeah, um, totally. But like, but no, but now I... <laughs> Because I did things, the, 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 like, I, I, I literally took one class at Emerson, and then, um, it, and then my last semester, I did the L.A. program, so I, oh, and then moved wow. to L.A., so I, yeah, so I took the one class, we performed at um, the Hong Kong in Cambridge at the time, uh -huh. now, now the comedy studio has, is its own club, it's, it's a new club. Okay. Um, but yeah, but that was the first place I ever did stand up, and it was with Emerson. Emerson, um, uh, wow. the, that one class, yeah. And and Mike yeah. is still teaching there. Actually, he was the only comedy class uh, uh, professor back then. Yeah. I think. But now they yeah. have like, a whole major, right? A whole so major. that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So I did that and moved to LA. So I started comedy in LA technically because right. that's where I actually got my, you know. I learned I learned from going to the clubs like that's how I learned mm -hmm. so I didn't know what I was yeah. doing I just went out there I was like I was just you know I was just kind of just I just did it you know but then I yeah. didn't realize I was going I people usually go to LA when they're established they don't start there. right they don't start here <laughs> so, yeah 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 but I had such a big ego I don't know if you call it an ego no all comedians have egos okay like I don't yeah. care how like how you know I chihuahua like you know like trying to box all these you know major hitters you know and think and it was like yeah. I can do it I can do it I still had like such a big you know attitude about it yeah it was, it was just funny and they and they're like putting their hands on my forehead while I'm swinging at them you know like they didn't care you know it's, it was it, that like, was you don't know my relationship yeah. <laughs> with all the, the, <laughs> the comics out there it was great like it was great like we I literally and I just miss like being able to sit there and watch them for free every night you know if you're a comedian you could just go to the pubs for free and just watch them right you know? so that they were my teachers right. you know and they still are you know okay. yeah yeah that's amazing yeah. so but okay so did you go to emerson with the intention of getting into comedy what did you i don't even know what you graduated in so how did I that was... happen where you were, you what's the spark for comedy and i guess what like why emerson why did you transfer uh, okay. Um, well, I was failing at GW. <laughs> um, <it> was, <laughs> Emerson should, no, 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 you know what? <laughs> I was pre-med and failing at GW. And I, no, and I was just, like, I graduated, you know, you know, with honors and all of it. Like, I, I always had good, right. good grades. Um, I shouldn't even be telling you this, but I feel like someday you'll find I was on, I was on, academic probation at GW was tw I was pre-med and and the uh the advisor was just like why are you doing pre-med and it was just because all of my cousins were that's what they were doing so I kind of just mm -hmm. automatically um followed, knowing that I hated science like I hate it with a passion you know what I mean but I yeah. was good in math yeah. and and got away got like C like C's and low B's um, yeah. And, and even then I should have known, you know, not to do science, but like everyone was doing that and I didn't know what I was doing. Like I was, yeah. so when I was at Emerson, finally it was just like, holy cow. But then like, I still had my mom's practical mind, you know, mindset in my head and, right. she, you know, and I was just like, you have to do something, you know, practical like she hates what yep. I do like she still hates yeah. it like I'm I'm a grown I'm a grown woman and still lied you know who still lies to her mother like um <laughs> I know she doesn't yeah. if, I, if I'm if I'm having a show or doing it she doesn't know that I'm doing that I'm doing something else you know I, I'll say anything wow. else but that 
yeah yeah it's like I'm yeah. grown <laughs> but, I, yeah. but I'm also an em- I'm an empath and I can so like I would say and or do anything to avoid negative energy right and that's, that's the type that's the type of energy she comes at you with um so it's weird but like so I chose something practical so I did the um, visual and media arts because I'm like okay I can do production you know production will pay the bills you know rather right. than like going in with you know you know complete confidence that I'm actually going to make it um mm-hmm. <laughs> and and I don't know, I think because of that, like, and because I, uh, it just, it took a long time. I was, I based, I'm still paying my dues. You know, I started this and yeah. like, I'm still paying my dues. Like, wow, still paying yeah. My dues. like yeah. yeah, and it's, it's, yeah, like, I think one of your questions was like, what do you talk about and who are you? And, and that was one of the issues. It's like, and uh, it's very segregated comedy, you know, it's like white comics. Yeah. And then you've got black rooms. So black rooms, you know, they have no clue who I am, what my culture is, who my people are. And that's what I'm talking about all the time. But I'm funny. Right. Well, they like it when I do my, my mom's voice because, it's, right. you know, it's puny. It's like a tiny little voice that they like. Um, yeah. So they're like, keep doing You know what the little voice was. They still didn't get that I was African. They didn't get where my yeah. was. And it was like, that's too much for us easy to connect with you with and it was and I'm like a stickler and I'm just like no I have other details I want to include yeah. <laughs> and they're just like just keep it simple and I and I and I and I'm really stubborn so like I, I know I have those setbacks yeah. um but those setbacks um will you know, will, will help me someday as a writer. Like, I guess those, those, those attention to details help me as a writer, you know, cause I get to clear, I get yeah. to tell you everything in my writing. Um, so right. I do write as well. So, so yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So I'm still working on it. I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. Still trying to become somebody someday. Yeah. And is that like in anything you do, like, is it, or is com- comedy like the main passion for you? Or are you honestly like kind of like everything in one? Because I know you do some acting and some voiceover work and some writing and probably everything else. I know you have a little bit of casting history as well. So it's like, how do you pick a lane? Or do you just like try and meld them all together? No, comedy is always the reason or the why those mm. other things happen. So for mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. Like, so I... I, I you know, I, you, I always have had a day job and, um, and somewhat creative, you know, day job when I was living in LA at least. Um, Mm -hmm. so, you know, so I did the casting thing at the beginning and then, um, eventually, uh, and then I was like a model scout at one point. And then I, uh, I landed, uh, at MySpace and that, that I was able to work there for about two years Mm -hmm. until, and then we got laid off. So then it was like, okay, Mm -hmm. so what do you do now? Um, so then it was like, Obama <laughs> gave us these two year extensions. I was like, holy shit, I can, I can pay the rent, you know, um, with <laughs> yes. this extension. I'll pretend like I'm looking for a job. Um, and now uh-huh. I'm going to hit the road. So I hit the road for the first time to do comedy and blessings come wow. for some wow. reason. Blessings will come when I use comedy as my focus and, and my reason. Mm-hmm. So like, so suddenly, yeah. yeah, so suddenly I'll get phone calls. Um, And then they, you know, some Eritreans um, heard about me and they told me, hey, we're having a a soccer tournament. Um, Why don't you come to, why don't you come to the soccer tournament in San Diego and, you know, do a show, whatever. I said, okay, will you pay me? They were like, no, we're not going to pay you. So I'm like, okay. So then I thought, (laughs) all right. (laughs) So I didn't have a laptop. Um, So I burned one of my, from LMNO, one of the editors was a really good friend of mine. So he made me a comedy uh, DVD, or he made me a professional comedy DVD. So then I went to um, Radio Shack, and I um, and I put, I bought, I got a, a laptop on credit, Radio Shack credit. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. I'm also telling, right. I'm also yeah. telling my age right now too. So, <laughs> so then I got this brand new, and then I and I said to him, okay, so how long? I was like when can I, can I return this? And he was like, yeah, you have 30 days to return it. I was like, all right. So I have 30 days 
to hit the road, do some comedy, sell DVDs, and and then return. I was like, oh, and can I return this anywhere? You know, at any radio yeah. tech in any any state. And he said yes. Yeah. So I so I went to San Francisco and on the way and then I made some phone calls for so some comedian friends. So then I got mm -hmm. booked in Seattle. So now I know. So now I knew. Okay. So um. And then the the guy in Seattle said, "We'll pay for your hotel. We'll pay for you to perform, but you have to get yourself here transportation." So I had a I did have a mm -hmm. car. So in LA, everyone has cars, right? So yeah, yeah. I, had, I had a I had a, at the time I had a brand new car. So um, I put you know made the and what they said was if you're going to drive to Seattle from LA, you make sure. So I put brakes good because you're on an incline the entire time. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, so I made some phone calls and had set up a bunch of shows in, in, in um, San Francisco, like every, you know, many shows, like back to back to back to back. Um, and then, uh, and then, and then drove up to Seattle and mm -hmm. in an Oregon area and, um, and, oh, in, in San Diego, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, I did do the show in San Diego um, and, and sold DVDs. Oh and and made about four hundred dollars so that was like road money okay um, yeah and and you know so so that's basic that was like my first uh sort of sort of a burst of like you know confidence to actually yeah out i can do it. this and, it, and i did it yeah so then um i loved san diego uh, san francisco so much that i ended up moving there while i was unemployed oh. <laughs> So then, um, <laughs> so I, it was still California, so you could still get unemployment. So, and, but while I was there, um, this Eritrean guy said, hey, um, I want you to, you know, I own a tax business and I want you to be a tax preparer, um, you know, in Vegas. And I was just like, what? Okay. <laughs> and then, so I, so I got certified. I went to Jackson Hewitt um, and got certified as a tax preparer. Um, mm -hmm. And it only took, you know, I had three, I had three to four months to do it because we had to be in Vegas by mm -hmm. December. And yeah. um, so that's what, that's what he did. So I, I was a tax preparer. And so I went to Vegas and I performed and then I pre connected with the person that I met in, in San Diego, um, a comic. Um, and then the two of us connected in Vegas and then I got booked and actually got on um, a couple of those shows were paid. So um, crazy. So I had like, yeah. yeah, so I had an, an apartment paid for. I was uh, preparing taxes that I was getting paid for. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and then, so that's how I did that. It was, it was during that whole time yeah. when I was, um, yeah. So, so then all, so then I, because I didn't have a computer, because I, the tax, the money that I made from preparing taxes, um, I was able to buy myself my first MacBook Pro. And then, there like we go. Social, <laughs> yeah. So when and then I moved yeah. back to LA. So like so then yeah. my social media life became stronger. So I was able to actually I didn't like I was able to finally post my shows online, and that's how you became more. Uh, you know, people mm -hmm. were more aware yeah. of you. Yeah, and then I uh, and even during that time, I taped with a, a show called Comedy Time TV. So that's when they mm -hmm. posted all of my african jokes you know on 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 google and whatever and hulu at the time as well so like it was i was i finally had like an uh a presence on the internet yeah and that's that, awesome. all of that happened within that period of time like when i yeah. got um laid off it's so crazy how things like fall into place like that and like because when you yeah. said like with tech what like yeah. how is this relevant I still <laughs> but... do my own... yeah and I still do my own taxes <laughs> that's so <laughs> but from, cool though from like, that yeah the journey I love that so with that being a little bit of your past what are you thinking like how has coronavirus like affected the game is it has it not really affected you because everything is kind of social online or like you're not able to go to like clubs anymore at least temporarily so again, so after the recession hit LA, I was only able to like survive. Actually, I should have left after that, like really great. After after Obama stopped giving us free money, um, you know, I should have probably left, but I didn't. I stuck it out, uh, and I learned other skills during mm -hmm. that time. But then when I ca I came back to Boston because of that, because like life was just too hard to maintain in LA. 
I, so again, because I'm, 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 I'm really grateful that I am pretty smart. So I can, um, so I came home and uh, stuff just started falling on my lap. Like I had an idea to be a, 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 a property, a property manager in LA because that was like one, mm -hmm. uh, one of the hustles people right. have, like, yeah. you know, at least you have your apartment, you know, and then you could like go on auditions and blah, 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 blah. It didn't work out Very in LA, but secret. when I, yeah. yeah, but when I came here, suddenly <laughs> that opportunity fell on my lap. So I was a, an apartment, um, like five buildings and, but it was like a, a, a um, really racist company and they, it was, I forgot how racist Boston is. Um, yeah. so that hit me really hard. And I, and the apartment management company was in East Boston, which is still like the most, you know, racist yeah you know, city, city in Boston. Um, yeah. So I worked for this Italian company and I hated it. Um, so after that, thank God for Uber. Right. So then I became an Uber driver. <laughs> um, but during the, while I was in Uber is such a godsend, you know, it's just godsend. Like when you're trying to figure life out, you know what I mean? Like Uber yeah. can really is, is a great interim job. And plus I'm so social and I yeah. met people and, um, and you know, I met people who gave me opportunities but then, like, the radio um, station fell on my lap. So mm -hmm. came, I had my own radio show here in Boston, um, WZBR. Mm -hmm. uh, are, you, are you okay? You look like you fell. Yes, sir. <laughs> my my oh, tripod yeah. fell. <laughs> um, yeah, so, the, so I became a radio. I didn't realize I had a good voice for radio. So, um, <laughs> so I was, had my own, I mean, I co-hosted a radio show, um, 1410 AM WZBR. Um, mm -hmm. so that was pretty great. So one of the, ho one of the radio hosts there, um, is like the director at Urban League, um, here in Boston. And he posted about a web developing class. So I'm still doing comedy here. I'm still keeping that going at, at local clubs and smaller venues, um, and, uh, so now I was like, okay, well, it would be nice, you know, to be able to create my own website, you know, have more control of the industry. Cause like, as long as I've been right. doing it, um, learning the business end of it has always been difficult because comedians don't share. Um, it's a really <laughs> cutthroat industry and there, no, yeah. no, no one is trying to show you or teach you how to do anything. It's you're a lone wolf, you know, comedi yeah. comedians are loners and you just have to figure it out on your own. Which is also a good thing because the journey is also yours and you could do with it what you want and how you want and you can right. fit in where you, right. wherever you want. So where your unique, you know, quality is, you could use that as your, as, as how you get it in. You know what I mean? You just have to figure mm -hmm. out, just mm -hmm. don't try to fit in. Just, you know, just, um, just go where you fit, you know? So I was like, okay, yeah. so let me, let me gain some control here. So then I learned how to, so I got a web developing certification. So I learned how to code and that was like nerve wracking. Um, but what, <laughs> but uh, what that led to um, was like a, you know, was a great internship. Um, and, uh, and, and now I am, I was accepted because of uh, the internship at Hack Diversity um, which is a, a company that um, hires Black Latinos and they're trying to bring Blacks and Latinos into the, into the tech industry because it's all, you know, not very diverse at all. Um, you know, like the only, I mean, and Indians aren't allowed to apply because <laughs> they already, yeah, they also, I guess y'all already yeah. in the industry. Sorry, Indi there, yeah. Indi yes, Indians and Asi Asians, they're already in there. But, uh, but no, but blacks and Latinos need to get in it. So I was, just, I was grateful yeah. for that opportunity. It's just like, holy cow. The one thing about Boston is that they have, as racist as it is, they have so many opportunities like that here, like diversity mm -hmm. type of anything that you tend to have a, a, an organization that'll help you get it. It's really fascinating. Right. So like the universe brought me back here for a reason. You know what I mean? So now sure. I got accepted um, at uh, this company called Apprentice Careers, which is the same. They also, they give you apprenticeships um, and apprenticeships for people of color mostly. Um, mm -hmm. And they train you, but this time they train you for the position. So now, so like just as the COVID thing happened, all mm -hmm. I was already accepted in 
this training. It was, it's a 14 week training and I've, I've already been hired at company to start in July as a cybersecurity analyst. So like, right. so that's, so it was kind of a smooth that's transition awesome. because yeah, it is. Yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a smooth tr transition um, because uh, we went from, we were going to go um, take classes physically, but everything is right. online. And so the classes started just as normal and we're taking exams online and everything just kind of worked out smoothly. And because of my relationship, because of LA or because of the previous relationships I had out there, Flappers Comedy Club has been doing auditions for, for people to perform online. So I, I got accepted into that and um, okay. got booked on a couple of shows. And I'll, they're going to book me on other shows because um, they're looking for a lot of comics to, to fill in those dates. Um, so that's right. been working out. So I'm, I'm still – and I do run my own show here in Boston. Um, it's yeah. now it's Comedy World. Um, I'm actually going to talk to the owner and ask her if she wants to – do it online like other company like well flappers yeah. seems to be the only company the only club that i've heard of so far that's doing it but online <laughs> um yeah. yeah so so it's it's yeah it's pretty smooth like i'm still applying for um f a festival in la and um and other stuff like you could still apply like i've still i've been i've still been auditioning for roles like in films um, mm -hmm. But they ask you to film yourself and then right self tape it digital yeah. digitally yeah so very familiar yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> huh? yeah. yeah I'm very familiar I've been doing yep. doing quite yeah a bit yeah of those you, yes exactly exactly yep model actress yeah. <laughs> yeah um so what would you say like if you had to give like a word of advice to these like young alum that are graduating and they feel so helter skelter about the world it seems like for me just listening it seems like kind of like go with the flow and like trust yeah. just trust in the universe is kind of this theme here but what else would you say as like words of advice for the youngins coming up um, or even people who are like, just yeah. trying to read like reformat their life okay so one thing that i learned um from hack diversity um was it, first it was an amazing fellowship first of all um i wish what I learned from Hack Diversity, I kind of wish I learned in high school, in college. Um, and if some, I don't, if, I don't know if people are spiritual, but I am very spiritual. Um, so I do meditate and I do, uh, you know, with my higher self. Mm -hmm. And something told, like the one thing I didn't do, there was, there was sort of a detach um, in my earlier career where I would, I would always, well, it's not my fault. Like, companies will always try to make you hide anything that you do outside of your life and outside of right. your, you know, anything creative is like looked yeah, down upon and definitely. they don't, they don't want to hear yeah. about that. <laughs> They're just like, we don't want to hear how fabulous you are outside of work. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you, yeah. we need you to just be miserable with the rest of us here, you know? So that's right. like, that. you yeah. know, like that's <laughs> how I, so it's really, it's actually quite depressing, you know, cause now, because it's a, because you have to have a day job, you have to do that, but you still want yeah. this other thing going. And then you've got all these liars in, in the clubs, too, pretending like they don't have day jobs. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, yeah. like, why are you, like, why are you so tired or sleepy? And you don't want to admit that you have a day job, but it's so foolish because 99 percent of those people have day jobs. You know what I mean? But so, so yeah. this time around, I don't know if it's because, you know, I'm over 40 now and I don't know what happens. Like there's something happens when you when you're over 40, like you just don't give a F anymore. Like so <laughs> yeah. I so I just started to now I post both even on LinkedIn. People know that I'm doing mm -hmm. a comedy thing and throughout the entire my whole hack diversity experience, even during my interviews, I, I talk about stand up because, first of all, it's a skill that. 95% of the world wish they could do and can't. So usually when True. when people are hating on me or like, you know, giving me negative energy, it's like, you you think you're funny, don't you? Like, like it's like something yeah. that I, I think, and I'm just like, you think you're funny and you're mad that I, you know, know that I am. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. and, and you're yeah. mad that I go out there and like, and just use that to de-stress and um, to, mm -hmm. and it's also that it's, that's so important. Like when I'm stressed, like what gives me joy and what gives me, you know, I don't care if I'm not, okay. if I'm not getting there and just talking and, and just being funny and mm -hmm. like making people laugh gives me pleasure. 
So like, why should I stop yeah. doing that just because I'm not famous or just because I don't fit, you know, a certain, you know, status quo, you know, whatever. It's just like, no, yeah. eventually all of that is going to work itself out. So like now that I'm now that I'm doing this, uh, having this career in this career. Wow. Like eventually I'll be able to work from home. I'll have more like, um, no, yeah. I know, I know other, I know comics now who are, you know, you know, who are cybersecurity, you know, either analysts or something else in the industry. Like one of the headliners mm -hmm. I prefer um, at Flapper, Flapper's Comedy is a penetration tester, penetration tester. Like, you know, like he like, he's a hacker basically. So yeah, he's, yeah. So he's a hacker. So I, so that's, that's like a sign from the universe. The universe is telling me, and I had to open for this guy. So, mm. you know, so it's just like, so I'm yeah. on the right path. Like he's, he yeah. works a very, you know, you know, difficult job or whatever, but there's a lot of freedom in that industry too. So like, mm. cause like the biggest thing is I just, you know, I am very responsible. Like I want to pay my bills and feed myself. <laughs> and, you do? You know, <laughs> oh, <I love> that. <laughs> but no, comedians <laughs> make me feel like I, like I'm an idiot for that. Um, yeah. So yeah 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 so that's what i'm saying so so just uh you know don't deny who you are i think is is probably the advice um because we're all so different and we're also you know different things matter to others that i can't really speak about um i just know that uh like just know your why know why you're doing it you know do you enjoy whatever it is that you you're pursuing if the answer is yes then don't stop don't stop doing yeah. it. Just like create, just make a lemonade out of lemons, you know, like yeah. <laughs> that's my, that's my, I wish I can give you an example of a perfect example of that. But I, I think I already did earlier with the, I was laid off and I still made it work somehow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. You've definitely proven your ability to make lemonade at this point. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, yeah. and on my res. Oh, okay. Can I share this? And this is the reason why I say do not do not uh, deny who you are. And then because that is the that is what's going to get you. Okay. First of all, <laughs> I um my resume. Oh, the connection, the disconnect to connection. Okay. So during this whole like becoming you, you know who I am and what I'm doing now, like in the resume building, and because I I always had anxiety about the cover letter. It's just like how do you write a cover, mm. cover letters? Like I've been through college. Like, why do I have such heart attacks? Like when it, when it comes to cover letters. So like what helped mm -hmm. at Hack Diversity is they teach you how to tell your story. First of all, like, yeah. So you're telling a whole story in your resume, right? So like, so then I listed and because my story is so crazy, I realized, oh my God, <laughs> I have nine certifications. I'm going to list all of them joints. Like, Hello. Who cares yeah. if they're all different? They they were all different, yeah. but number one, it's it's a talking point. You know, they can. It's a great yeah. conversation. You know, you could explain. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yourself <laughs> and why there's like a huge gap. <laughs> this, there was so many <laughs> gaps in my resume, but um, it's just like okay, now I can explain myself. This is what happened. This is what happened at that time. So yeah, they want to get to know the person. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and uh, so the cover letter was, that's what the cover letter was. And, and, and comedy and the fact that I've done, you know, comedy shows in front of, you know, a small intimate group to, you know, as big as 300, that's a big deal. You could be so clearly if they need you to, to right. speak at an event or if they need you to present something, this person has those skills, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. so yeah. yeah, those are all transferable skills. So so fast forward, there were other like other serendipitous moments with other people trying to hire me or whatever. And, and, and that connected me to comedy somehow. But mm -hmm. all of those, those people, they always know you. At, they always knew me as, oh, oh, what? oh, you're the comedian. So even if I don't, mm -hmm. even if I, if I'm, if I don't have the job or if I'm not qualified for that position, they know who I am. So in the future, I might just my personality <laughs> to get more <laughs> certifications or whatever. Um, yeah. I might get hired because of that. They went, Oh, you're the comedian. So it was enough that they remembered that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like having, yeah. so the person that hired me at this job that I'm starting in July, I, there was only one position was available. Like this was a very, like, um, this was a very, uh, competitive company, you know, like it's a wow. competitive apprenticeship. 
So right. I walked in there and it was weird. I don't know if she Googled me. I don't know what happened, but it was different. Cause usually when they ask you, when you get interviewed, it's like all of these technical questions or whatever that you have to answer, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't like that. This one was talking to me and it was very strange. She didn't, I had to ask her permission to talk about myself. <laughs> Who I am, you know, like, cause I was worried. I was just like, is this, is yeah. this like, why do I yeah. have to ask, you know, who, you yeah. know? So, so then she was like, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So then I said, so, but I was like, uh, but I was afraid. So I only gave her like a 30 second, you know, like an elevator pitch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was like, I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know something weird about this. So I didn't want to take too much time, but I said enough. And then she just asked, she was like, okay. So it's almost like, yeah, yeah. I already know that about you. Like she already knew. Yeah. So it was very yeah. interesting. Then all of a sudden she was like, wait, you mentioned LA and you mentioned Emerson. And then she was like, you mentioned, um, stand up comedy. Um, um, Mary Kennedy and I was like yeah I was like I know Mary I performed with her you know because she's a comedian who lives in LA and, and she's an actress and all of that and she was like oh my god like she almost lost it like her whole body she was like ah like she almost like wanted to fall out and I was like are you okay like what is happening and then she was yeah. like she was like she was like uh, she's like that is my best best girlfriend I love her and I was just like I oh, love yeah. her yeah we did an all Emerson all female comedy show at oh, Black cool. Comedy you know in yeah. LA and I was like and then um and then she was just like I, she was like I want to hug you so bad she was like but I know it's not professional and I was just like holy <laughs> sh I was like okay yeah yeah don't 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 hug me I was so yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, yeah. I was like you could you could do whatever you want to me but I'm not doing anything to you um, yeah. <laughs> so, so <laughs> but I still had my fingers crossed so it was just like okay so um that's that's the most interesting part of all so when when I told half diversity what happened because some of them were judging me they were just like oh why did she keep talking about comedy like you know it was just like they they you would get judged and then there was there was yeah. a, and you know it is tricky it is tricky because there are some people that are super corporate and you know and they just hate that you know that yeah you know um Passion, they're very judged yeah they're very yeah. judgmental and harsh <laughs> yeah. you know about world. and he's just like okay yeah. well you're not the guy that i want to work for you know what i'm saying like i don't right. want to work for you like i want to work for That's like true. someone who gets it or gets me and and wants and can can get that we could do both and 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 right. still do a a decent job you know what i mean like some my yeah. you know what i do outside of work should be complementary to what I do during the day, you know? So that's mm -hmm. how I see it. And that's what I was telling, feeding my spirit and feeding my soul. Like, it's just like, that's what I want anyway. And that's why I, I haven't been happy anywhere. It's because I keep separating who I am outside of comedy. Right. You know, but it's like a necessary, it's just like, but you have to, you, you know, I, retirement is around the corner or whatever. So how are you going to creatively, like, yeah. do this and still build for the p future and just be responsible, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but it's all working out. I'm not giving up and, the fight. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's so clear to see the passion within you that you know that, you know, what you're doing matters to you. And I feel like you, you seem like to be in such a good place for yourself right now. And yeah. so it's so I great really to am. hear that. Yeah, it's it's so great to hear that. And especially to hear you going to coding and kind of the tech world, mm -hmm. which is like our future. So it's like, yeah, so important that people see that it's not just a young people game. It's like, it's all ages need to get on board because this is, this is where we're going. This is where we're heading. Um, yeah. So I love, I love that. Thank you. And, and I was, I was, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm so really happy that I said yes to myself and not give cave in to the fear of it all um because it mm -hmm. was a terrifying you know endeavor to even try yeah. this because coding is a, is a it, it literally is a whole different language that you're learning yeah. it's a computer language um so once I got over the hump of that and once like the brain was just you know once I you know the, the I, I know what that is like I can immediately see so, you know, mm -hmm. a code and understand what it is. That's when, like, mm -hmm. I find I saw hope, you know, down the line somewhere. Because, you know, because yeah. it's, it's a terrifying, because, you know, because what I want right now is, like, whatever it is that I do has to, I need, uh, I need it to work, and I need it to be long term, and I need it to be secure and all of that. Because you have mm -hmm. to, like, when you read comedy books, they always tell you to have a day job, and they always tell you to be secure in that 
in that at least when you're pursuing comedy because you have to you need to so that's where I'm at right now it's just like so now that I'm now that I I have like a stable something going on then you can pursue it Mm -hmm. from a a less stress um uh, right you have that stability yeah Yeah. you have that stability fall back on but it's yeah I get it yeah that's yeah yeah so all the, the pra- so it's like my mom was trying to tell me that when I was younger, but but she did it wrong, you know. She's like, yeah. you know, calling me yeah. dirty and ugly and all of that. Those insults, it's yeah. like came from such an angry place, but I didn't realize it was because she feared, you know, me not yeah. being financially stable. She just didn't have yeah. the right communication. But had she yeah. said that, and and you know, and if you're a parent out there, yes, please do not insult your children like like that they're it's not going to register yeah. whatever you're trying to right. tell them isn't going to register you have to you have to just talk to say why you feel what you feel don't like mm-hmm. attack and don't like call yeah. them names and don't so that's what that's what yeah. i grew up with i mean that's but, what we run in the direct you know we run in the opposite direction and then and the op- like, yeah. yeah i would i probably would actually no i'm i was i've been a very practical person i'm i'm trying to stop uh uh like feeling bad about this is decisions that I made in the past but it's just like mm-hmm. no you did what you were trying to do that but those opportunities yeah. just weren't there and you didn't know where to look like you know mm-hmm. yeah like the only thing I do wish and if Emerson ha- can do anything about this <laughs> is <laughs> like the the I'm telling you like the resume building and understanding mm-hmm. how to create a resume and and having like maybe a workshop about like you know, not hiding away from our creative side and m- mending it, you know, you know, what I mean? like what right. I was just talking about, right. like, if we yeah. can have a workshop like that, you know, it just like had me once I, once it clicked, and once I had the balls, the, you have to have courage, and you have to have the yeah. balls to do it, like, you know, what I mean, it's just like, oh, my God, this yeah. is, this, there's a lot on the line here. And usually, when you mention anything creative on your resume, you get a lot of no's, but then suddenly yeah. it's because I mentioned all of that. My, my cover letter was like dynamic. Like, I wish I could show you it's yeah. One of, <laughs> like, <laughs> no, it's, re- it's because it was coming from a real place and they, you could actually feel like, you know, who you're talking, you know, who right. you're about to meet. And then when you meet yeah. the person, it matches, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, do you see what I'm saying? So like, yeah, it's, it's not like yeah. some cookie cutter where everybody's writing the same thing. It's like, it's so personal. Yeah. And I never even thought of, I never thought of anything like that. I, when I have to do a cover letter, I go straight to Google, like, what's the cover letter? Like, what are the basics? What do I need? And then I'm right. like, okay. And then you're right. It doesn't have any personality. It doesn't really no personality. say. Like, and my, so, and my interview yeah. a- anxieties went out the window. Like I, I love interviewing now because I'm right. I'm walking in there representing who I really am and not like who I think they want me to be. And then anytime mm-hmm. I step into that energy of like of talking about who who I think they want me to be, I get the job number one because I'm a I'm a great actress. Um, <laughs> I do get the job, but then I'm miserable because yeah. I'm being I'm someone I don't want to be, and I'm wearing right. clothes I don't want to wear because I'm 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 playing a role. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's all good. Um, let's, I guess, start wrapping up. I, yeah. There's no yeah. time. But I feel like we, we've hit a good point. And so I guess maybe let's, do you have like one crazy, fun story from the road or comedy or any of your ventures because I saw that you casted Flavor of Love and I'm, oh my god that was my whole life uh, but do you have just like a cool story fun story something to share so we can end on a, a big laugh well something well or my that. first my first well because this is where we're Emerson um my my first uh p- production job was um came from Emerson um like Emerson mm-hmm. you know so we did um the uh, did the LA program and back then all the Emersonians have it easy now because I came from the era when we had to like, you know, you know, beg to be on a list or even to create a list. Uh, so it was like us, uh-huh. our interest, showing interest. It was like, you know, if you guys can help us out somehow, this would be really helpful. So then we finally got in, mm-hmm. got on an email list 
Um, and mm-hmm. then like, so my first production job was at Elemental Productions and that entire building was Emerson. I'm talking from the youngest was 2003 at the time and the oldest was 1970s. Um, and he wow. was a producer yeah. and, and we're still good friends now. And, um, and the whole building was Emerson pretty, pretty much. And so my first casting job came from that, came that, so I, sh- I, and it was the longest casting job too, it was um, Animal Kidding, it was uh, on the Animal Planet Network. Mm-hmm. And then after that, um, I, that's when I did, but uh, Flavor of Love was just one month. Um, <laughs> and it was interesting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was really sweet, he was a sweetheart. He was, he was that's really good. Sweet. Yeah, no, he was actually really, really sweet. Um, he's like, he would Most hug you know. and, huh? <laughs> I said those women, though. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Um, oh, those women. We had to cast. We had to double cast because we gave them all. Um, you know, they all had to get tested, and uh, half of them well. came back with something. So that Ooh. was the main reason why half of them weren't weren't called back. Um, Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so the only so the ones that called back yeah. were called back were the ones that didn't have any disease. Fun fact. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not tell all flavor, my fla- fla- flavor 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 wasn't wasn't um wasn't tested though. Oh snap! Yeah, little, but that's not that's little, not really that's yeah. just that's just kind of gossip. But yeah, yeah. But no, I think the best part was um was getting hired. Um, my first job uh was with Emerson, uh, an Emerson yeah. connection, which was really cool. Yeah other stories too i'm sorry i feel like i'm i'm not leaving you on the best story but um the best story okay i will say who uh, um paul mooney gave me a joke um oh. paul Mo- do you do a lot of some people know yeah, know him. yeah you know paul mooney, right he used to write for yeah, Richard Pryor. okay good i'm yeah. sorry yeah no because sometimes people don't know who he is which is kind of weird um but yeah so i saw him at a starbucks in studio city in la mm-hmm. and i thought I was just looking at someone possibly from my country because he has very like East, East African features, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it was just weird. And he was staring at me and I was like, why is he looking? I was like, what is going on? And then he started talking. And then that's when I realized who he was. And I, and then I flipped out. Right. Yeah. But he yeah. was so nice. He was like, you want to have coffee? And I was like, yes. So he sat me down and uh, we started talking. He started telling me stories, stories, stories um, about how crazy comedians are and, you know, and how there was this one rape rapist comedian who would rape women yeah. at colleges and then do comedy shows at night. And, and then he was <sighs> like, and then he got caught and went to jail um, cause he was an idiot. Yeah. He would post where he was. <laughs> and then, um, and then he was like, Richard Pryor was the craziest comic. And then he asked me, and then eventually he was just like, all right, so what do you do? Who, who are you? And, and I was like, okay, I'm from Africa. Um, and he was like, oh, he's like, did you take a test to become a citizen? I said, yeah. And then he was like, tell them, tell them that they throw in trick questions. Tell them that Coke, Coke or Pepsi. He gave me that yeah. joke. I still do that joke today. Like I, I added to it, um, but he gave yeah. me the premise. He, he was like, all right. So that he just, with, with no, it was just so fast, so quick. He like yeah. gave me that joke. Yeah. So wow. a lot of magic. A legend. Moments. Yeah. Oh, a legend. And uh, just a lot of magical moments happen like that in LA, just, just from being there. Cause we're literally in their backyard you know <laughs> yeah yeah they're everywhere it's such a small it's like a huge city that's so spread out but then the people in your little communities it's so small it's yes truly a small world yeah yeah so awesome. well that was thank you so much for sharing we're so yeah, no glad problem. that we could get this working after five attempts <laughs> i know yeah <laughs> um and i do have another episode coming out i i, I played a, a journalist or um Ooh. or a writer they, they give me different titles every time on this tv show called um for my man it's on tv one so okay uh i was i was i was on an episode um i think a year two years ago and the the newer episode is coming out this summer okay um, tv one TV what's, one, a, what's the show again? For my man. For my man. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. We'll have to and I have 
and I do have that comedy, uh, a monthly comedy show. It's called Awet's Comedy World, and I and I'll um, bring on guest hosts um, every at every show. So a guest, a new guest host, will be on the show at every every show. I, I'm not sure what's happening right now. Like I'm supposed to have a physical, okay. like a, an actual show June 23rd and in July, but if it's still too soon because of the pandemic, we do it online. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Just keep us. Yeah. Keep like send a link if it ends up being online, so we can know. Um, let's see. Marlene said, "Oh, yeah. Where can we see the comedy hour?" Um, so we're waiting to see if it's going to be online, and then yeah, and then it's in Boston though. If people are local, oh, yeah. they can. Yeah. It's in, it's can in Boston. It's called uh, the Rossi Theater. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, but um, but if we do it online, it'll it'll be great because I can invite everyone all over the world. Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> that'd be so cool. Aw, okay, great. Well, thank you so much. You're um, welcome. Definitely keep thank us you. for any any other opportunities we can see you, watch you. Um, oh, thanks, I do have Marlene, a website coming. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a website coming soon. Um, it'll it'll probably launch in July, I think. Um, cool. So, yeah, so I'll have like um everything there yeah <laughs> yeah put those new skills to use <laughs> yes thank you it. yep awesome. all right well everybody thanks for tuning in thank you, had a you great chat. for having me love you emerson yes. love you ebony thank you yay ebony ebony right, guys. yeah have a good one